You are approaching Saturn. You are only seconds away. I have arranged for you to meet my companion. In the mid-90s, Sega had an image problem. With the constant bickering between the Japanese and American branches to their, let's say, questionable marketing strategy in the Americas, they were a company constantly at odds with itself. The launch of the Sega Saturn in North America had numerous black marks. Its surprise retail launch and being $100 more expensive than the competition didn't help matters much, but a good chunk of the games they brought to the table were rushed, which could easily be seen in their ports of Virtua Fighter and Daytona USA. Wow. Daytona was a visual disaster. Low draw distance with graphical pop-in and intense polygon warping made it a game that was really difficult to look at. When compared visually to the original Ridge Racer on PS1, it's no contest. But hidden behind that mess of polygons was a great arcade racer. The controls and handling feel great, the track designs are varied and memorable, and the sense of speed still feels pretty alright despite the unpolished visuals. Daytona USA went on to become one of the Saturn's most popular titles, even being included as a pack-in with the system later on. But as with any popular game, especially a launch game, there's room to iterate and innovate. After the success of Daytona USA, Sega got to work on the next installment, but this was no sequel. They gave us something else. Daytona USA Championship Circuit Edition was released for the Sega Saturn in November of 1996 in Europe and North America. Developed by the same team within Sega that ported Sega Rally Championship to the Saturn, Daytona CCE straddles the line between remake and full-blown sequel, acting more as an expanded rebuild of the original game. While it includes all three original tracks, all retooled and looking spiffier than ever, practically everything else about this game is so radically different from the arcade original. You could technically call this a retoning of Daytona USA. It just gives off such a different vibe than what I'd think you'd want from a Daytona game. Starting with the intro music. Not to say that it's bad or anything, I'd compare it to what Daytona 2 would eventually achieve with its tone, but it doesn't nearly have the same high energy or over the topness that was established in the original. We'll leave the tonal shift at that for now, because there's plenty more I have to say about it. Daytona CCE has a couple modes to choose from, including your standard arcade mode and a new split screen versus mode, which is a fantastic addition. The arcade mode is your typical arcade racing fair, select a track, pick a car, and race for first place. Track selection gives you five courses to choose from. The three from the original game all return with a fresh coat of paint and, for the first time, designated names. Yeah, this game finally gives proper titles to those original tracks. 3-7 Speedway, Dinosaur Canyon, and Seaside Street Galaxy. Daytona CCE also introduces two brand new tracks, National Park Speedway and Desert City. The original three tracks remain pretty much unchanged in Daytona CCE, but they all still look great. So I'll mostly be going in depth on the two new tracks starting with National Park Speedway. Gentlemen, start your National Park Speedway is a mid-length track that has you racing on the edge of a large amusement park. It's got several elements that help it stand out, starting with this large sweeping right-hander, which leads into the first sharp chicane, just a big old wall in the middle of the racetrack pretty much, followed up by a series of quicker chicanes that can be navigated at full speed with expert handling. Up the road we get a glimpse of the roadside attractions, complete with a fully animated roller coaster. Don't get too distracted though, as this next right hand corner can ruin your race if you don't hit that drifting apex just right. Then the final left turn takes you right back to the opening straight. National Park Speedway is a fast and nimble track that finds a sweet spot in difficulty between 3-7 Speedway and Dinosaur Canyon. It feels like it really captures the essence of those original tracks and it fits right in there with them. The second new track is Desert City, another mid-length course, more on par with Dinosaur Canyon. Despite the name, the only aspects of a city you'll find here are the storefronts on the pit lane and start finish straight. Though that straight does have a large freight train going parallel with the track, so that's pretty neat. The first turn is a big right-hander going through steep canyon walls. The track boundaries in this section are notably wider, but you gotta be precise to avoid going in the sand. Lots of zigzagging road bits lead you to a cliff's edge, where large hot air balloons decorate the skybox. 
Just up the bend though is a harsh 90 degree hairpin left turn, but nothing a well executed drift can't handle. After this tunnel comes a big sweeping lefty with an even wider track boundary. Head up the slope, hit a right, and that's a lap of Desert City. If I'm being honest, I feel a bit indifferent about this track. It's certainly not bad, but it's not a go-to for me. If I'm racing through all the tracks in CCE, I'll typically save Desert City for last. I mostly just find desert landscapes for racing tracks kinda dull and boring, but that's just me. The actual circuit layout is still pretty neat, but them deserts, man. Of course, racetracks in a racing game aren't anything without one of the most important elements of all, the cars. The Hornet is arguably one of the most iconic cars in video games. Its bold clashing color scheme makes it immediately recognizable to any racing game fan, and its handling style makes it a vehicle that's easy to learn but difficult to master. For Daytona CCE, Sega took that original iconic car and just chucked it out the window. Gone is the old handling style, and in comes a new paint job and car chassis for the Hornet. Also new was car selection. Right out of the gate, you got eight cars to choose from, each with their own unique stats, as well as a few unlockable vehicles. The cars are where I feel the game's main faults lie. For starters, the handling just feels... off. Controlling your car just feels overly sluggish, like the car is reacting too slowly to your inputs. There is an option to alter the control sensitivity in the options menu, but it only slightly mitigates this issue. I'm just not able to go into that same third corner on 3.7 Speedway with the same type of finesse. It just doesn't feel right. Hi! Before we move on, let's talk about those secret vehicles. I mentioned that the Hornet wasn't in this game, but that's not technically true. It is in this game, but as a super secret vehicle. What I mean by that is that it's really the Hornet in just the look and name only. It handles nothing like the original. It's meant to have all of its stats maxed out, so you have like your best grip, your best acceleration, your best max speed, but it handles nothing like the original. It's a cool bonus for sure to drive around these new tracks and the newer versions of the original tracks as this really nice, really well modeled looking Hornet, but it just doesn't feel the same. Also the horse from the original Saturn version is back as an unlockable, but I distinctly remember there being two horses. I was only able to get one to unlock and I don't know if I was just messed up in the head or something, I don't remember. But I can only get one to unlock, but I do remember there being two. But it's the horse, it's a funny little gag. Lastly, and I would be kicking myself for not mentioning this, but when it comes to the controls and how you can customize them, there's two more options that you can mess with. You got the arcade racer wheel and the 3D controller. The wheel is probably how I would recommend people play this game. I mean, playing with the control pad is fine, but playing with the precision that you get from playing with an arcade racing wheel is just really how Daytona was meant to be played. You also have the 3D controller, which is a fun little novelty, but I honestly don't recommend you play the game with this. It suffers from the same issues that a lot of other Saturn games that take advantage of it have. The joystick is just way too sensitive to be really accurate at all with it. Uh, I didn't honestly bother recording any footage of it because it's just really not that fun to play with. But just take my word for it. Honestly, using the regular control pad is much better than using this thing. But you do got the analog trigger, so that's a plus, I guess. Now, on its own merits, separated from its lineage, the handling is fine. It's just not what I would expect from a game with Daytona USA in its title. And to that degree, we get into the game's overall presentation. Visually, Daytona CCE is an outstanding looking Saturn game. All the added polish to the tracks makes them come to life, and all at a consistent 30 frames per second, making for a much smoother experience than the original Saturn release. But where this all takes a turn, for me, is the game's tone. The original game has an insane, over-the-top vibe going about it. From its intense speed, bright and bold colors, iconic car, and high-energy soundtrack, it's a game that birthed the look of what we now know as the modern arcade racer. Daytona CCE, on the other hand, just drops all of that. The Hornet as we know it is gone, and the soundtrack is completely redone. That's right, no more of that iconic Daytona soundtrack you've come to know and love. Every song has been rearranged, and man is it just boring and bland. All of these songs just lack any kind of personality and charm that their original mixes brought. Apparently a new soundtrack was a much requested feature, as some fans felt the original soundtrack didn't fit well with racing. To that degree, the new music just gives the game a different vibe. It gives it about as much personality as an EA Sports NASCAR game, which makes me wonder. That's probably the demographic they were going for with this game. NASCAR was crazy huge in the late 90s and early 2000s, which would explain why this game's tone would cater more towards actual NASCAR fans. 
The Hard Rock intro and generic looking stock cars, it kind of speaks for itself. With all of that said though, where does this game fall without its lineage holding it back? Well, Daytona USA Championship Circuit Edition is a phenomenal Saturn racing game. It's just a bad Daytona game. The package here is solid with impressive graphics, detailed tracks, large amount of cars to choose from, and multiplayer options. I still feel like the handling is problematic, but what's here is a rock solid foundation for a great stock car racer. But I cannot recommend you buy this game. At least, not this version. Because elsewhere, something was a brewing. Daytona CCE as we know it was released exclusively in North America and Europe. In Japan, it was a different story. After the release of Daytona CCE, the developers continued to work and improve on the game, and came away with what many consider to be the absolute definitive edition of Daytona on the Sega Saturn. Daytona! Daytona USA Circuit Edition is an expanded version of Daytona CCE released exclusively in Japan in January of 1997. At face value, Circuit Edition is more or less the same game as CCE, but a number of small enhancements have been made to greatly improve the experience, starting with the graphical improvements. The game now has a slightly longer draw distance than its cousin across the pond, which are the kind of graphical enhancements you'd love to see from games of this vintage. They've also added the ability to change the time of day on each of the tracks, which is pretty cool. And here's a big one. The devs have also added in the option to race with the original arcade soundtrack. Not the rearranged soundtrack from the original Saturn version, but the fully synthesized arcade music, which is a first for home consoles. I absolutely love this. They could have just done this and it would have already won my heart. But no, they kept on going with the improvements. The devs also went back and altered the car handling to make it feel a little more like the arcade game. While it doesn't match it one to one, I still think this is a massive improvement over CCE. Hitting those drifts just feels so much better in this version. The multiplayer offerings have also been greatly expanded. Besides the split screen experience, Circuit Edition also adds online multiplayer via the X-Band service. Here is by far my favorite new feature. Daytona USA Circuit Edition takes advantage of the Saturn Tyson cable. Yes, I finally get to really talk about this thing. The Tyson cable allowed for two Saturns to be hooked up for system-linked multiplayer games. Only seven games actually took advantage of it, and Circuit Edition is one of them. The link process pretty much happens instantaneously, and then you're off to racing. System-linked multiplayer is just the coolest experience. Just throw in a couple racing wheels and you have the closest thing to a competitive arcade experience at home. On the subject of multiplayer, we have one final elephant in the room to discuss. While online play was featured in Circuit Edition, there is no such option in CCE. So to capitalize on the newly released Saturn Netlink service in North America, Sega re-released Championship Circuit Edition with Netlink compatibility as Daytona USA CCE Netlink Edition. This version was not released at retail and was only available via mail order online directly from Sega. Given the lowish numbers of adopters for the Saturn Netlink adapter and the lack of any mass awareness for this game, Netlink Edition is regarded as the rarest North American Sega Saturn game, with prices on the second-hand market going up to $1,500 or higher. Nothing about Netlink Edition's packaging looks any different from standard CCE. You just get an additional Netlink pamphlet and new disc art. So finding a sealed copy of Netlink Edition is highly suspect, because there's just no way of knowing if it's legit or not without opening it. As for this version of the game itself, unfortunately Netlink Edition is just regular CCE with online play. None of the added bells and whistles from Circuit Edition are here. This isn't a Sega Rally Netlink Plus situation, which makes its incredibly steep price even harder to stomach, if not already. In the end, Daytona USA Championship Circuit Edition is a truly solid racing game. Detached from its legacy, it's a standout title for the Sega Saturn, but I feel like that's really the only way you can actually enjoy it. The Daytona name gives this game a certain expectation that, at the end of the day, it just doesn't live up to. I'd still give it a recommendation for Saturn and Daytona fans as an interesting footnote in the series, but if you're going to play it, the Japanese Circuit Edition is the one to get. It's still relatively affordable and all completely in English. Daytona CCE is a polarizing entry in a legendary series, one when compared to its other entries with an identity crisis, an issue that Sega themselves in the mid-90s knew all too well.